I have unboxed uh, Alexa. Stop radio. Sorry about that. Um, I've unboxed it, put it on my makeshift trestle bench. I haven't tried it, you can see it's no sawdust on it yet. I want you guys to see exactly what I'm going to see first. The foot pedal goes down. Oh, good God. Assuming you can see it. I turn the unit on. No, I won't. I better plug it in. Through the miracle of video, I've been away for about an hour. I've actually rigged it up so I can voice control it, at least the pump. But anyway, I'm back again, so let's see how it works. We'll try again this time. Alexa, turn on sis back. Oh, it's fired up. You can hear it going. That's sitting on there. Now I'll activate this switch, which is the back here. That. You heard this pop. There you are. Look at that. It's lifting up the whole bench. Shit, everything's falling down. But it's happening. Now, I've got this piece of timber, rough very roughly dressed, it's grainy, there's no way known you could potentially use this on any furniture, it's just so rough, we'll see if it actually holds although it might not because it's too bloody no, well that's, that's snafu'd that, hang on I'll switch the head only because I haven't connected the other one Alexa, turn off shop back no, wrong one, idiot. Alexa, Alexa, turn. Oh, all right. Alexa, turn off sis back. Okay. Oh, that's better. Okay, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I've swapped the heads out. I've got this smaller head. I've got rid of the big fat one. This one came with the other unit, so we'll see what happens now. Let's try again. Alexa, turn on sis back. Okay. Yep, that's attached. Here we go. It's on. There you are, guys. I am impressed. Now, you can spin that around. Flip that. Now let's go this way. Now you wouldn't want to press the release button with that down there without having your hands under it. But we'll see what happens. Here we go. Pressing the release button now. There you are. I am impressed. Holy shit. Look, that's the, as I said, you have seen exactly what I have seen after my impulsive purchase, and it was an impulsive purchase. I uh, didn't need it. Oh, look, I'll make use of it. I could have used it years ago with uh, when I was making larger furniture. But on that rough sawn, well, it's not rough sawn, it's... Uh, Put it this way, that that would be equivalent to maybe 40 grit sanding or not even that. Um, as I said, it's timber bought straight from your timber yard. Um, hang on, I'll take that off, I'll just go and get something else. I'll switch the camera off and bring back something else. Alexa, turn on sis back. Okay. Now what I've got here is a piece of wangi and I've got no, and this is really, really rough. It'll be interesting to see how this holds. Now I'm not expecting anything. Yeah. 
I didn't expect, oh, hell, not too bad. But considering the porousness, this is virtually what you would get straight off maybe a bandsaw. You can see all the uh, marks. Look, it comes off, but it's enough to, hang on, yeah, it's the whole head moving, not the board. If I tighten that up, yeah, it won't move. Now look, I'm not sure now, as you can see, it's not that stable. That's why I bought the two of them. Um, let's take this off. What else can I try on it? No. Well, that's not going to work. Um, hang on. No, that's not going to work. As I said, I'm just playing. This is the first you've seen. That's certainly not going to work. That. There you are, a couple of spare pieces of timber. This is a melamine. That's not going to move no matter what. I didn't expect it to. Piece of MDF. Yep, that's not going to move either. Now we'll see how it works. There's a hole there. I'll try and put that over the hole. No. Why? Oh, there's another hole there. So let's try. Oh, idiot, I've got my foot on the pedal. No. Yeah, that's over the hole. But yeah, look, I can appreciate that along that line. There's no way you knowing that's going to hold. No way. It's fairly solid. Now, I'd have the bigger one on it, and naturally, for longer pl and wider planks, I'd have both. That's why I bought the two units, so I can then set them up both. Now, what you need to do, which I was a bit confused about initially when I got it, hang on, Alexa, turn SISVAC off. Alexa, turn SISVAC off. Okay. Thank you. God, I'm lazy. I, I could have just bent over here and switched that plug. However, before I rigged all this up, I had that down the bottom, this box way over there somewhere, so I can be forgiven. Anyway, to connect the other one, with the second kit, you get this little unit. You plug that in there, and that through this actually feeds the air to the other system. You also get... I think one of these connectors, don't ask me how it actually fully works, I'll have to figure it out. Um, there, there's a video on it, how it actually connects up. But then you get this splitter, which then connects the two pipes, two uh, hoses you get there. Somehow, again, I'm not sure exactly what the full configuration is. You might have to put one of the other plugs in there. That fits in there. In there, or one of these might fit somewhere else. And then that goes in there. And uh, maybe that goes there like that. I think that could be the actual configuration. Again, I've got an RTFM, and for all it's worth, for something so fucking expensive, brilliant construction, 
the RTFM is fuck all useless. They're, they're one of the worst manuals I've come across, the Fest 2 type of thing, and you'd think for the price they'd invest a few bloody, what's the name, book writers. Take a lesson out of Lee. Lee are brilliant. But anyway, um, fortunately there was a video, um, even trying to get a, 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 a digital copy, the PDF was just about impossible. There are some dodgy sites on the internet where you can download PDF. I'm not, I'm not going to say dodgy sites. I say dodgy only because you have to download all this sort of software. Um, and that's it. Oh, one other thing. I also bought... Oh, look, damn it. I'll switch it off and I'll try this. Hang on. Okay, I'm back again. Um, I've got to try and get here we are. This is another type of a head you can get for it. As you can see, it's for narrow stock. Um, it's incredible how this bloody thing is nearly twice the price of that. Go tell me, bloody festool. Hey, but when you're a festool tragic, you tend to do stupid things. Okay, put this on. Seated. Seated. On. Tighten this beast up, set it up, and now let's try that little bit of narrow stock we had. Hell, you know that 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 to me is impressive. Just this little and. Oh my God, it won't come off. I'd, you can see it. I'd, I'd break this before it had come off. Press the button. However, it has got its limitations. Yep, it's not good enough. Might just make it. Yeah. There you are. That hot, but that would just about be the limit. But for normal pine, um, you know, the 2B1 or whatever, oh, bullshit, 2B1, 42 by uh, 19. Uh, where is it? I've got to have some. Some air. I'm just going to walk about for a second. Here we are. <coughs> Pardon me. I've got to watch it. There's a hole at the end. Yeah, it won't go on this. I've drilled holes and it just... Uh, it just makes it, but there you are. That's not going to move to hell. I am so impressed. And then the beauty of it is you can release this clamp. Again, you can't see it on that. You, no, you can't see it on that either. There we are, I'll show you. That clamp there, that actually sucks. There's a suction under there. And that actually sucks the whole thing down to the board. So you do need a non-porous board. It's not much good on a uh, tabletop with dog holes. However, you can clamp a plank or a piece of melamine or quarter inch ply to your tabletop. And then, it, oh you just hear it, hang on, listen. You just hear the pop, I'm going to do it now. Yeah, you can just hear the pop that it sucks and that's it. That's now solid. Look, what I might do is I might connect, I, I don't know why I need to. I can connect the other one up and uh, maybe add, tag it onto the end of this video. But to me that is the first impressions, first unboxing. And to be honest with you, I am impressed. Um, I didn't need it. I've done without it, however, having said this, I um, reckon that if anything happened, like, <coughs> pardon me, an out of warranty breakage or accidental breakage or damage that isn't covered by warranty or theft, I'd probably go out and I would replace it. Um, I would not say, well, bugger it, it's gone. I'm not going to waste any more money buying it. I would because I am impressed.
It's... Look, I'm a lazy man. Not so much lazy. <coughs> I'm getting old. And sitting there bloody grabbing clamps, hammering it up. This is what's one of my biggest problems. Where the hell do I put it in my workshop? It's just so cluttered. But this seems like a good spot. Not only that, I can then pack it away, put it away, and that's it. But here, it's ideal in my work. Anyway, enough talk. We'll see whether there's a video later on with the other one. But if not, Uru for now. Keep safe. Back again, boys and girls. The only thing I've done so far is to put this plank on the new setup. I've actually connected the two up just to make sure it fits. I haven't turned anything on yet. So, again, you will see exactly what I will experience the first time. Now, what I have done, as I said, this and this coupling come with the second, sorry, these two couplings come with the second. You take out the nut, replace it with this setup, and hopefully the foot power will control both. Well, hopefully. We shall see. Now, let's turn it on. That's locked. That's off. That's off. Alexa, turn on SISVAC. Okay. It's on. This is automatically clamped down. This one's still loose. I'll clamp it down. And it's not happening. So what I'm guessing is I've screwed up the setup. I might go back and have a look at the video again. Alexa, turn off Vaxis. Try again. Yeah, I know. Turn off Alexa. Turn off Sysvac. Alexa, turn off Sysvac. Okay. Back again. Just realised before I start hitting panic buttons. I hadn't turned that little switch to the on position. Now we'll try again and let's hope we get it right. Alexa, turn on SISVAC. Okay. And I actually had that thing already set back here. So looks like it's working. Holy shit! It's working. Now, I didn't put, I naturally lined up this timber because that, I can't imagine that being gripped too well. It's totally undressed. That's slightly dressed. It looks like the smooth side. Down the bottom end, you'll see it when I flip it up, um, there's some rough sawn. This seems to be the best edge for the width of the big uh, pad. I might have to get another one of these for the smaller uh, planks or see how this little one uses to hold longer pieces. I don't know. Something to experiment with. Well, let's try it. That's felt good. That's felt good. Now look, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to stand back move everything that can crush out of the way just in case this doesn't hold because as I said I haven't tried it but let's go this way turn that on turn that on take my feet out of the way because I've only got bloody thongs on for you Yanks it's flip flops and there you have it I am grossly impressed. Now, I took some stats and I believe this piece is about 12 kilos and honestly I, 
I don't want to force it too much, but that that is just not good. Look, the bench is not the sturdiest, so I wouldn't be doing too much chiseling and hammering. But to run a plane along it, um, I have got the brakes on. I oh, look, I'd have to get a. Depending on how much work I use, I'd have to get a much more solid bench. But when I move this, the whole bench moves, not just the thing. And oh, look, I, I'm impressed. That's all I can say, I am impressed. Um, hang on, I'll move that right there. Let's see if I've got to really loosen this up. Turn that back up. Lock it in place. Lock it in place. And, of course, come here. Let's try this. The one thing I've got to remember is if you have two pieces, one on that, one on that, when you release the, well, hit the foot pedal, it's, it'll release both. So if you happen to have the two pieces sideways, the one you're not working on could drop. So just bear that in mind. Here we go. Oh, look, oh, look. I am, oh, shit. That nearly hit a big toe. Um, I am sold on it. Look, it's not everybody's cup of tea. It's not the cheapest equipment out. However, having said that, if you ask how much is it, then hell, you can't afford it or you don't really need it. If you turn around and say, yeah, I probably could use that, then it's a case of getting off your ass, saving up your shekels and buying a set. You don't have to buy the SIS2 straight away. As I say, that's, the vacuum is called the SIS VAC. Um, actually, they're called the SIS VAC VP for vacuum pump. SIS VAC SE, the one that comes with the foot pedal and that. Oh, look, I'll, I'll probably mention this in the intro. I haven't shot the intro yet, so I don't know. In fact, I'll probably edit this bit out. Um, yeah, so all I can say now is uh, Uru, keep safe, and maybe once I've put it through its paces, I might have a follow up video. Catch you. Bye, boys and girls. Alexa, turn off Vaxis. No, I've done it again. Sorry, I didn't find the device name Vaxis. Alexa, turn off Sis Vac. Bloody idiot. Okay. Thank you. Hero. Okay, boys and girls, as with all my stuff, it's never rehearsed. It's very, very seldom reshot. I try and do some editing, but more so to correct some of the idiotic statements I make and put an overprint on it. I did say I'm going to put an unboxing at the front, but I really couldn't be stuffed boxing it up and unboxing it for the sake of that. So I'll just go through what came out of the box. What we got, this is the VAC pump. Hang on, let's... How the hell do you undo this? Oh shit! I don't believe this. So you pull out. Oh, all right. Well, it's a bloody hard pull out. Holy shit! What you get is, good God, the pump with a plug on it to keep it dry and a cord, the typical Festool detachable cord. In the box, bugger all. Um, there's a spot for the cord, a filter that needs to be changed and the manual doesn't... F I told you how to change it, but you can't lift the bloody thing out, so how the fuck do you undo it? I've got no idea, but there must be something there. And that's it, there's a hole down here for something, and stuffed if I know what that is. Um, and that's it. Let's close the lid and... 
never open it again until I have to change the filter. On the front, there's a gauge. Um, when it goes green, then you've got pressure on. Um, on off switch, I've incorporated a smart plug so I can then say Alexa, turn it off, turn it on, which saves me having to do it. Now, where I positioned it for the demo, it was quite easy to turn on and off. But that cart will not be standing there in my way, which means this could be on the ground, tucked away or whatever. So having Alexa turn it on and off is a great bonus. Okay, let's move that out of the way. That in itself is called a Vaxis, no, Christ, I never get that bloody right. It's a SysVac VP for vacuum pump. Now, the other one you get is a SysVac, SysVac, um, good God, what do you call it? Uh, SE1. In that, you get this big rubber pad, <coughs> pardon me, and you get this foot switch without this uh, extension. We'll more on that in a second. In that, you've got this lever that will tilt it backwards and forwards. This tightens the thing so you can actually spin it around, rotate it, and this pin a locking pin that locks the pad. Come here. You don't come off that. Christ. See what I mean? Totally unprepared. Don't come off that easy. I now have to find the knob. Oh, here we are. Lucky it didn't go too far. As I said, totally prepared. <laughs> As I say, I've never done this before, so I've yet to learn there's a very short thread in there. Okay, now, that pin holds that in, in that uh, groove. And on the flip side, there's this lever that that's on the off position, so you can screw it down, bolt it down to your tabletop. If you've got a smooth enough tabletop, flip that forward, and what that does is turns on the vacuum from there through there, and with this rubber seal around it, which naturally you need to keep relatively clean, it'll suck it down and hold it down. And it is a very firm hold. So let's put that back. Oh, before you before I do it anyway, I might as well show you. Made a fatal mistake, I don't know why. This is quite nearly double the price of these other ones, but I can see now why because it's got extra components in it and it is much higher profile than the other ones, as you can see. Which means you can't really use this in tandem with one of the others, which I found out. So if you need to use something that requires both clamps with what hold there. You've got to buy another one of these. Annoying. And also, <coughs> this is where Festool will make a killing. Is sometimes that is too wide for a lot of long planks. But if it's a long plank, you need two of these. You can't use this for wide planks. It's not and board sheet goods. Not a problem. You can use both. And with the, we'll go into that later. Um, but anyway, that's it. I'll put this back on. Make sure you seat it all the way down. That's in case you happen to buy one and don't do it properly the first time. Oh, come on. Tighten that up. Oops. Tighten that up. Move that out of the way. Oh. Bloody co cords, Jesus Christ! Not cords, hoses. Okay, looks like this isn't going to come too easy because the hoses are wrapped around 
underneath. This is what they call an SE2. Now what you get with the SE2 <coughs> is this little extra coupler that you screw into the foot pad and this splitter that you then feed into the two hoses coming out of this unit here. And I, at first I was really confused but then I because I, it couldn't even RTFM well, well, no, yeah, it wasn't in the RTFM. <coughs> I had to watch a video. Anyway, um, oh yeah, that's right. This end from the SIS one is the one that actually plugs into your VAC. And this one connects to your SIS. The SIS two connects to your SIS one through the foot pedal. Complex, but hey, it works. You've seen it. Well, you've seen it in the video anyway. Well, of course, this is a video, not the photo shoot. Works on the same principle down and around. And when I said in the previous one, you can use it for wider boards. To get more stability on the wider boards, you can actually twist that around, which gives you about the same width stability as the round one. Um, other than that, I think I've wasted enough time. Um, catch you later. Uru. Oh, shit. <laughs> Just a quick little one before I wrap this up. If you happen to do a lot of work with sort of circles, which I do like clocks or whatever reason, jigs uh, and stuff like that, um, this is ideal. Now, I haven't drilled a hole all the way through that. It's only about halfway through. It's a five mil hole. So, Alexa, turn on SISVAC. Okay. Clamp it down. It's clamped down. Put it on. And as you can see, you can flip it down and do whatever you like with it. Um, lock that in. Spin it around, lock it off. Now, oh, where's that foot, foot, foot lever? There. Now, if you happen to drill the hole for whatever reason all the way through, what I finished up doing, it's actually a 5mm hole, not having 5mm down, naturally. The hole shouldn't worry you if you've drilled all the way through it. I've put a plug in here, 6mm, and you can actually cut this flush if you like and knock it out the other end if you need with a 4mm dowel or just leave it there. But as long as that hole is plugged, they are, it's on solid. You can do your little duvalakis. Naturally, you can't mount it on the flip side because of that, but you cut that flush and uh, you probably wouldn't even need to sand it and you'll be right. But if you cut it flush, you then will have to make sure you knock it out. Um, actually, that 6mm hole, yeah, I did. I, I, I used a 6 No, I didn't use a 6 doesn't matter. It might have been a fractured smaller imperial but if you need it take it out put it in as you can see there won't hold or oh, actually you can put it in the other side anyway that's it this time hopefully Euro.